Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. And today, have you ever said these words, this isn't what I've signed up for? Well, listen in to a little fanciful tale. With gracefully measured steps, the perfectly coiffed, beautifully clad bride walks down a rose-strewn path toward the altar and her handsome groom. Months of preparation have been spent in anticipation of this one moment. Hand in hand, the confident couple stands before the minister and repeats the traditional wedding vows. I take you to be my lawfully wedded spouse, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, until death do us part. And all of their invited guests have no doubt that every word that they said, they meant from their heart. But let's fast forward a few months, shall we? And the scene changes. Our young couple are in bed with a cold. There's a chill in the air and the young wife rips the duvet from her husband, accusing him of being selfish and smelling like a gym locker. The husband stomps into the kitchen and returns with one glass of refreshing ice-cold orange juice that he places by his side of the bed with a triumphant smirk. Reaching for another Kleenex, the young girl blows her nose and pulls the downy duvet around her. After all, it was a gift from her side of the family. She mutters between clenched teeth, selfish, selfish to the bone, that's what you are. Now, don't be too hard on this young couple. They're suffering from a universal malady called selective amnesia. This dreaded disease of the heart causes certain portions of their vows to be lost in a fog of self-centeredness. It only allows recollection of the fun stuff, wealth, health, and good times. Christians fall prey to the same affliction. The symptoms usually appear a year or so after surrendering their hearts to Jesus. They remember the peace that overwhelmed them and carried them through the early days of their salvation. And they remember the bliss of instantaneously answered prayer and the blessings of sweet fellowship with other believers who had an infinite amount of patience with them. After all, they were babes in Christ. They remember all the promises of God all too well. After all, these promises were probably the first verses that they memorized. You know, the verses that promise God's love, peace, mercy, forgiveness, and provision. They tend to forget about the Bible passages that were probably spoken to them that talk about unconditional surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Their unconditional surrender eventually becomes conditional. After all, God wouldn't be leading them to places that weren't very nice now. He didn't mean that bit about picking up their cross, right? Maybe he meant many junior-sized crosses. You know, like those little grocery carts for children at grocery stores that only fits one or two small items. Yeah, that's what Jesus meant, just mini crosses. However, eventually trials and sorrows and tragedies and temptations will come along their path. And they will probably shout out to God, hey, this was not in our contract. Where's the prosperity? Where's the glory? Why is my son rebelling against me? And why did I lose my job? And why does my family roll their eyes at me whenever I tell them that they should be doing a better job? Why hasn't my husband changed? And why are you convicting me of my little quirks when people in my church are worse sinners than I could ever dream of being? How fair is that? The truth is, there are no hidden clauses and there is no small print in the covenant that God made with mankind. Jesus laid it all out. 
he gave us the full terms of agreement. He gave his life to save us from the consequence of our sin. He conquered death to free us from eternal death. His death and resurrection gave us access to our heavenly Father. God will never break his covenant with us, and he will never forget a promise he made. However, in turn, we must allow him to transform our lives from the inside out, no matter how painful that might be as the Lord shows us the condition of our hearts. We must walk away from destructive behaviors, bad attitudes, and our selfishness, no matter what the cost. It's a small price to pay considering how much we gain in return. I'm not going to read the next Bible passages because they're quite long, but I urge you to look them up. You can go to BibleGateway.com and look them up there. Matthew 16, verse 24 to 26, it basically says, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And Mark 10, 29 to 31, Jesus talks about the necessity of us leaving behind our creature comforts and our comfort zones. And Romans 5, verse 1 to 5, I encourage you to read the whole thing, but I'm going to be starting at about verse 3. We rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. Let's pray. Lord, deliver your people from the malady of selective amnesia. It robs us of our peace. It weakens our trust in your character. And Holy Spirit, remind us of your truth and bring us back to the terms of our covenant. As we are the bride of Christ, I think it's okay if we do a recommitment ceremony, so to speak, right now. So repeat after me. I take you to be my lawfully wedded Lord, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health because death will never separate us 